Sweet Jesus Radio. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to Sweet Jesus Radio. Coming to you from House of D. Got my co-host, D. That's me. What up, D? Hey, what's up? Hi. We're both uh, kind of getting over a cold. Yes. I'm hungover. I'm not. But either way, we still want to wish the listeners from Sweet Jesus Radio, to all the listeners and just everybody, a very uh, happy new year, happy holidays. And I almost uh, was going to reschedule the the recording, but I said we can't start the year off procrastinating, rescheduling. You know, you need to start off on the right foot. Nobody put a gun to your head mm-hmm. and forced you to drink that much, Jesus. Nobody put a gun to your head True. and forced you to try heroin for the first time. Or eat as much menudo no, as I'm you just did. Kidding. Yeah, I ate a lot. So, yeah, listeners, again, just a big thank you to you guys. Thanks for all the support. That's how we're starting this off, just showing uh, appreciation. Thanks for buying the merch. And even if you don't listen to the show, if you bought merch... Because it's just a dope logo or you just want to support your boy. I appreciate it. Uh, Yeah, so we're going to be all over the place with this one, like I said. Mm -hmm. A little hungover, a little under the weather. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're going to go over some of, you know, kind of the topics that kind of jump out at us. We may miss some shit. We may not. We're going to bounce all over the place. We're not necessarily going in chronological order. And we're just going to have some fun and just come along for the ride, guys. We appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Mm. Let's start with uh, just a kind of like a holiday recap, D. Uh, oh, okay. How was your Christmas? Let's put it that way. Um, well, it was actually um, pretty great. I went to California for the first nice. time in about two years. Cool. Yeah, an out-of-state trip was definitely needed. I went to go see my mom, spent some time out there, did tons of shopping, lots of sleeping. Nice. Lots of sleeping. Um, you had a bunch of days off, home. Huh? I did. I had like, uh, I must have had like six or seven, something like that. Um, so I had like about a full week. What was the coolest gift you got? Um, What did I say? I think I told you what I thought the coolest gift was. Um, I did get shoes, which I really needed. Nice. So I would say that's probably, the, I mean, the coolest was kind of lame uh the couch covers couch covers yes shouts to couch covers uh because i have a dog you know so i like to try to cover them up but anyway um they didn't end up fitting so kind of like already my first letdown i think of 2018 oh yeah but it was cool at the time the thought the thought the thought was nice yes covers yeah so uh did a really long drive to and from i hate driving i yeah and then i the first the drive over there was mostly at night it was really rough uh, and but i did have my co- a total of what 12 hours yes yes about, about. 12 hours mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. i have my co-pilot fudge with me fudge shouts the fudge He's, sitting right next to me yeah lounging that uh, for the listeners that may not know fudge is the the house dog the house pet mm-hmm D's child. Mm-hmm, my fur child. Um, he's toothless. He is toothless. That's So if he bites you, don't worry about it. He's just going to gum you. He's going to gum you. He was making weird hacking, fucking gagging noises earlier. I think earlier. he was hyperventilating because I was in the bathroom without him. And you, and you saw like, him out, out uh, um, um, outside. Yeah, the door. some grass yeah, or some shit. I don't know. He's starting the year off wrong. Ugh, he's going to let me you know, let me die on the first day over here. He's, to, he's, he's old, though. He's, he's kind of old. True. Let's see, my Christmas, uh, yeah, pretty chill. Family, it was, I went out, I partied on Christmas Eve. Went out with the homie Tito. We Tito. Uh, did some bar hopping. Ended up at Prickly Elder. Shouts to Prickly Elder. Shouts to Len. Len, the man. Lenny. Uh, bumped into Bobby there. Shouts to Bobby. Rob Bass, the worst DJ name ever. Oh, uh, he's lying. That's totally cool. Nah, even he says he started off as a joke, but then it kind of stuck. <laughs> mm, kind of like um, my ear. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Your life kind of stuck. <laughs> yeah, just like, gotta, eh, you know, I wasn't really, it was supposed to be a I joke. I wasn't really trying but, to be alive or anything, but, you know, kind of yeah. stuck. Um, yeah, Bobby bumped into Tanya. I believe it was her birthday. Christmas Eve is her birthday. Shouts to Tanya. Uh, again, yeah, it's chill, you know, nothing crazy. It's kind of dead. Everybody's doing the family thing, but. I was determined to get polluted. And yeah, went back to the homie Tito's. Spent the night there. That was my Christmas Eve. Christmas Day was again, yeah, just family stuff. Getting, you know, pigging out. Didn't really do the drinking thing because I had to drive back to Las Cruces. 
had to work the next day. Um, so, but I believe I called in. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sounds like you. Yeah, so that was the Christmas. New Year's Eve, which <laughs> was yesterday. I don't know when I'm dropping this, but we're recording this New Year's Day. New Year's Eve was, uh, you know, I was trying to go out. I wanted to go out, but I kind of caught a cold a couple days ago, which is super rare for me. I don't remember the last time I caught a cold. It never really blows up into anything big. Uh, this time, eh, you know, it just happened to kind of blow up on New Year's Eve. So I was trying to build up the energy. Couldn't really do it. So I stayed in. Me and D, Netflix, some liquor, some beer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. D was cooking Manulo in the back. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I got fucked up. <laughs> I still got fucked up. Uh, watched a bunch of movies. Mm-hmm. Pretty chill. You know, not every year has to be all crazy. Well, uh, to be honest, this You was... are 41, Jesus. You are. Yeah. You don't have to, you know, be a psychopath every New Year's Eve. Mm. You know, which is, which is kind of weird because I honestly think holidays, uh, a big part of me thinks they're kind of whack they're kind of dumb they're kind of useless they're holidays right Mm -hmm. it's just whatever but especially new year's um because it's just the whole time thing as we've talked about before being just a construct a construct a human uh, abstract uh, Mm -hmm. thought invention Mm -hmm. but my other half the addict half is like hey man don't be hating don't be cock blocking we know we know we know holidays are fucking dumb Right. But but what are they for? We need we need we need reasons to party, man. We need a we need a mask. We need a mask. Our fucking oh, no. our bad habits. Oh. It's like, hey, Jesus, why why? Hey, man, it's New Year's, man. You know what I'm saying? Get yeah. off my back. It's New Year's Eve. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And then you wait for the next one. Again, Jesus. <laughs> well, hey, it's Washington's birthday, man. Come on now. God. You know what I'm saying? Any reason to celebrate? It's National Friends Day. Best Friends Day. Oh God. You know what's the next one coming up? Well, I what like is Valentine's. It? Galentine's, yeah. Galentine's. That's going to be we'll a big do, we'll deal. Do a, we'll do a Galentine's episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so no doubt. So that's holidays. That so, was the well, New Year's, well, you, you know to, what I'm saying? I want to talk a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I planned that, I planned to stay home. That was yeah, that was always that home. was always my plan because that's exactly what I did last year. Um, I was home uh, by myself, just here chilling, watching some stuff and making menudo. It was great. I got a little drunk too. Uh, this year, I didn't really drink too much. I got a little bit of a buzz, but did make some menudo with uh, some homemade red chili from my mom. Mm. It was really good, actually. Shout out to nice. mom. Yeah, yeah, she's dope. She uh, definitely hooked it up with some goodies, and so um, yes, it was it was great though. I I think the menudo was really good this time. It's only my second time making it. Yeah, last year was awesome. It was great last year. I think it's good this We're year. We're gonna make it a tradition. Yes, it's definitely gonna be a tradition. But I I mean I just can't be out like you said New Year's Eve. Um, New Year's Eve. To, yeah, New Year's Eve to me is like a amateur drinkers holiday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like the people that never go out. Uh, people that don't really drink too much, like, you know, you know, there are levels to this shit yeah. and they are, you know, definitely on the wrong level to try to go that hard that definitely one night. Definitely one of the nights that, yeah, it increases the chances people of some wild shit. People just get too shit. drunk. People get way too drunk. Like, they just get out of hand. I it's weird deal. that they still drive knowing that it's near, you know, the cops They're are out there dumb. twice as hard. It, it's New Year's Eve and St. Patrick's Day. One of, or I didn't lie, though. When I was younger, I, would, I, I didn't mm. care. Well, well, because you just you think you're invincible when you're younger. I guess it's true. You know what I mean, but if I were to go out, my plan was to. I had semi plans with the homie Jay and his wife Marisol. My mm-hmm. um, thing was just park at their crib, and we we're just gonna Uber everywhere because that's what they did. They Ubered. Uh, yeah, we, I was not gonna be driving. That's for sure. Because I know how I get. Everybody knows how I get. Well, you don't really drive too much when you're out there. You like yeah, get well, there it's on, and then yeah, it's on purpose. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm usually the driver. More responsible with that shit nowadays. Uh, any other New Year's talk, D? Um, New Year's. New Year's the talk. no, I don't think so. I mean, that was pretty much it. That's all we did. We don't really do resolutions, but I mean, I guess mm. we can pull some out of our ass just for. That's a thing. Like I said right? earlier, I don't care about holidays too much, or mm. or uh, you know, time and mm. you know what I'm saying. Anyway. But resolutions, like I said, the last time we did this mm. year in re- review was a, oh, I'm already. Uh, 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 Jack Daniels kicking in. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> sipping on Jack Daniels oh, while God. we do this. Uh, supposedly mm. hungover. But <laughs> the, uh, you know, resolutions it should be a daily resolution. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't have to wait till the beginning of the year. It should be a daily awakening, a daily revival, daily reminder. Mm. Set your goals. Revisit them every day. 
that whole resolution shit. Most of y'all, you know, you can get a fucking do that well, shit. And, and I, I think that I don't really have a problem <clears throat> so much with resolutions per se, because sure, I mean, you want to plan oh, yeah. out your, you want to plan out your thing. year, maybe, yeah, you know, you want to have some direction. That's great. But the problem that I have is people being all vocal about it. Yeah. Like, you know what? I don't, like I don't gotta know. Yeah. Like, like it's very important for them to say, want my new year's rev- uh, resolution is this. Okay, that's cool, bro. But I really don't want to have to look. Cool story, back. bro. I don't want to, have to be uh, at the end of the year being like, "Well, this is just another person that talked before they walked," and you know, well, they just want to just... seem either spiritual or they want to seem like they got something going on. So if you're listening to this and you're one of those people, sorry, please stop. But you're annoying. Don't, yeah. Uh, just do it. Actions speak louder than words. For one, for two, I know it's social media, and sometimes you want to post shit, but at least make, you know put a little funny twist to it or something. Y'all put, you know, a lot of y'all, I'm not hating. I'm just saying, guys. Not hating, just saying. But it's, uh, you know, it's generic shit. You know what I'm saying? I was busting my boy's balls. There. I don't want to say his name, oh, but no. he, he had a similar post and he oh. went all deep. And what he learned this year. And it was like stuff that you, you should have like learned a long time ago. Oh, man. You know, to appreciate, not take things for granted. Oh, man. So on and so it's like, yeah, if you, haven't you done learned that, that in 2017? If you haven't done that. Uh, in your 30s. If you haven't done that up until now, what, do you, what, do you, what you been doing? Something about spirituality. Oh. I mean... That's something that's you should already be doing. You know what I'm saying? Keep that shit to yourself. So actually, you actually look bad because it's like that's you're, you're exposing yourself to like, oh, you still haven't done that shit. Like, yeah, kind of like you know some criticism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for sure. And like I said, just for people, uh, just for me being able to be like, okay, just another person who said they were going to do something and didn't do it. No. Like, we sound like some haters right now. I, but, I'm sorry, but yeah, <laughs> we're we're just we're not haters, guys, but we're hating on dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's okay to hate certain shit. That's why this whole generation, it's about, you know, they're, you don't judge, don't judge. Yeah, there's a lot of shit you shouldn't judge, but there's plenty that we should be judging. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody's being an asshole, you can't be like, don't judge. Oh, no, yeah. you're, I'm you're judging an asshole. you. <laughs> or if you're just posting shit away just oh, for the attention and a few likes, the right. four likes that you get. And for your, you know, your friends to see it. Oh wow, he's really mm. insightful and you know, thoughtful and mm-hmm. profound. And oh, his his, his resolutions. I'm like, oh my god, calm down. A lot of that shit's <laughs> generic ass shit. Mm-hmm. That's uh, some basic shit. But one thing, it's not really a resolution. But I mean, it's just bad habits. All of us have bad habits. Uh-oh. But one thing I've been working on just throughout. Basically, when I first recognized it, probably like in my early 30s, maybe like, yeah, early 30s, or I'm like, you know what I'm saying, is why I'd always kind of look into why do we, why do we get angry at certain shit? It just seems like there's a lot of things that we get angry about, and a lot of it's not worthy of anger, you know, that much attention and emotion, uh, you know, you, why would you let yourself go there? Why would you let somebody ruin your day with some dumb shit? Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of situations where, yeah, you definitely need to get pissed and check a motherfucker. But, like, I'm trying to decrease, shorten the list of things that get under my skin. I think that... You know what I'm saying? I, I think the important thing for me with what you just said, because I get it, Um, you know, and we'll get more into it later <laughs> because I had plenty of anger this year. <laughs> um, I, um, I think that... And so I always say that you can't really control people act, whatever, whatever. All you can control is how you respond respond to it and how you react. Now, to go into this thing with your anger, like, don't let it do this. Don't let it do that. I'm I'm kind of in the realm of feel your feels, like feel feel them. You know, no one's telling you that what you're feeling is not right. I mean, maybe it is, but uh, uh, wrong or whatever. But regardless, like feel what you're feeling to get through it. But uh, to go along with what you're saying, like, don't don't uh increase its power over yeah. other things so it already has control over your feelings yeah let it not control what you're actually doing what yeah. you're saying how you look yeah how you treat people stuff like that yeah yeah I, we're human so feel it right but then catch yourself don't dwell on it don't let it uh overtake you you know what i'm saying feel it and they be like okay i'm pissed now what right what are we gonna do with this right you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but some people you know, myself, I've had my struggles. I've, I've, I've made progress. I've taken steps back. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to really shorten the list of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not just anger, just like even being annoyed or, you know, having the need to like 
you know, shut somebody down. I was like, I don't even say anything anymore. I, I'm not trying to argue with nobody, mm-hmm. especially if they're dumb, uh, especially if I already know I'm not going to change their mind. You know, uh, I'm just not going to react. It's I'm not going to react to to little shit, to dumb yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you want to call that a resolution, but yeah, just ask yourself, guys, look in the mirror. Uh, you know, did you have a any kind of interaction that day at work, at home, where with your wife, significant other, your kids, whoever, your parents, if they got under your skin, how did you react to it? You know, did you, and is your reaction going to be conducive of resolution, harmony, yeah. or are you just being part of the problem? Because you, even if you're right, if you're responding with negativity, just anger, participating in a cycle, yeah, you're just make, yeah, you're, it's a cycle. Mm-hmm. You're perpetuating the shit. Mm-hmm. Also, some motherfuckers aren't gonna change, so it's just like it's just, not even worth being angry over. You'll you'll yeah, be angry all the time. You'll stay yeah, you'll angry. Be yeah. angry. Like if <laughs> I tell people, like if I had to, like, because sometimes people have. I've been in my in my fair share of fights. This might not be the best example, but it's kind of an extreme example. Uh, but there's been times where like I just don't do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody gets all crazy and I'm just like, okay, bro, yeah, you're cool. You're tough. I get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't run away, but I'm saying I just don't do shit. Yeah. I just stand there and quiet. I'm like, okay. Like if you're gonna do something, you're gonna do it. They don't do shit, so they're the pussies, really. But I'll have quote unquote friends be like, hey, how come you didn't do that? How come you didn't punch him or whatever the fuck? I'm like, dude, if I had punched everybody that pissed me <laughs> off or annoyed me, or I'd be fighting every day, you know, every mm-hmm. fucking minute of the day. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, guys, just kind of work on your way you react, uh, being quick to anger. Most 99% of this shit is not worth it. Uh, you're, there's probably something internal. It's a, a bigger issue with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's, uh, let the goal be harmony. Harmony. If it's not, Ask yourself, is my reaction going to be conducive of harmony? If it's a no, then if you knew it's a no, don't do that shit. Mm-hmm. Do the opposite of that shit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's my, I'm going to keep working on that. Again, that's not really a resolution because I've just been on and off since my early 30s when I started reading books about this shit mm-hmm. and just checking myself. Uh, because I went through a period of like, because I got walked on and abused and all kinds of shit when I was younger. Mm-hmm. So when I got into my 20s, I was like, fuck that. Like, I would just check everybody. Like, mm-hmm. if a fucking cashier had an attitude, like, what? What the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody. Road rage for many years. But now I'm like, no, just Zan, breathe, guys, breathe. Mm-hmm. You know, count to 10. You know, so that's the that's the resolution, so to speak. Yeah, and that's, uh, I think that brings an interesting point, too. And it, um, I'm going to go into my serious one uh, yeah. right now. Um, so I don't know how I would word it um, as far as... Um, what the resolution actually is, but um, the whole um, explaining versus uh, justifying. Mm. So how you say, you know, you, you've been through all these things. So then when you got older, you, you were a certain way towards people, you check people. Right. So that right there. And just so everyone hopefully is clear about it, that's an explanation for what, for why, Jesus was like that. Not necessarily justifying. It's not a justification. No, it's not. So I think we really need to, uh, I think uh, I need to work on that maybe. I think people in general uh, need to as well. Um, Just realizing that not only, um, you know, know know the explanation behind things or the reason for things, yes, but um, it's not just enough to know them. You know what I'm saying? Like And all all the nice people out there, stop, uh, you know, if you're getting kind of uh, taken advantage of, don't 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 say, oh, I need to start being a bitch. Or I need to start being right. an asshole. No, start, start, keep being nice. We need yes. you guys in the world. Mm-hmm. We need nice people. You know what I'm saying? We don't want more assholes, but right. be more assertive. You can be assertive and still be nice. Mm-hmm. You know, challenge yourself to figure out ways to deal with different personalities, mm-hmm. different people. Don't have the same approach to everybody. Right. Uh, challenge yourself. Read some books. Uh, how to win friends and influence people. It's changed mm-hmm. my life. You know what I mean? Uh, what to say when you talk to yourself changed my life. So, yeah, don't, because that kind of bugs me. It seems like something little, but when not really nice people, yeah, so-and-so, you know, did this again. Mm-hmm. I need to start being a bitch. I need to start being meaner. Mm-hmm. And, and you'd be like, you, Jesus, people think I'm like this mean person. Like, dude, <laughs> I, I I try to, you know, be cool with people. Uh, but no, we don't want you to change. Keep being nice. We need nice. We need positivity. But right. you can be assertive. You can still be assertive mm-hmm. in a nice way. Be assertive. Yeah. Uh, do it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, really just, um, you know, it, you, just, you just have to really understand that uh, people's, uh, you know, the way they act to you, um, you just have to know <clears throat> maybe why they're acting like that. Yeah. It's okay to understand that. It's, it's cool. But that doesn't justify it. That doesn't mean we keep putting up with it. Type yeah, thing. you can disassociate. So, That's one thing right. I'm doing. I'm just going back to some of my old school mentality because I kind of went through a period of where I'm trying to be more tolerant and be, you know, forgiving and whatever. Mm-hmm. But back in the days, I was very black and white. If you did certain shit, you're dead to me. Like, mm-hmm. I'd cut you off. So I'm kind of going somewhere in the middle. Right. Where I want to be flexible, but... Gotta find that sweet spot. Yeah, but if... if You know you know what you're doing. Like, we can be civil. If I see you, I'll say what's up, but... It's nice of you. You're not going to be... You know what I'm saying? I got I to gotta cut you off. Yeah, and we're and we'll actually... We'll talk about yeah, that Yeah, I was going to say, That's we're kind of getting into it. Yeah. Um, now, so for your resolutions too, though, let's not talk about me. Um, why was it one of them... To stop opening multiple multiple bottles of beer when you haven't even finished one, how many uh, how many beer uh, how many beer? <laughs> Let's get three or four beers going. <laughs> Last night, how many did I find? I like had several two? going. Yeah, <laughs> the the ADD. You know what I'm Leave saying? Leave them all around the house. But in my defense, I oh, drink them. Oh God. I well, no, yeah, you do. I Thank, end up drinking thankfully. warm or not. Yeah, I drink them all. I don't. I don't waste that shit. Good. I need to I'd... stop eating spicy food. Uh, before bed. late at night before bed because <laughs> instead of going for a morning run i have the morning runs oh no <laughs> all right so that's the you know, that's the that's the resolutions quote unquote oh, yeah the the main thing i want to do this year is uh i forgot to buy beer for this shit yeah i was gonna tell you about that um is i oh, i want to make Jack. sure to <laughs> i have a half warm beer in my room i'm gonna get it yeah you probably should um and it's kind of you know i don't know maybe a overused phrase or whatever but i can kind of go more into it but i think it's um the whole uh i'm trying to make (laughs) self-care a a bigger thing next year because i think um i get caught up in too much with uh, just doing the day-to-day and kind of going through the motions that i forget to really focus on the things that would make me better so i kind of just stay you know what i'm saying i um yeah i just go through it uh so i'm not really taking i'm not really bettering myself all that much or am i taking care of myself so like plateauing or what yeah i feel like it yeah just uh in general so i really want to make sure like i do things like um uh really take care of my skin this year because i kept really? saying that last year i want to do a whole routine or whatever you know just other things you i want to make skin care i want to make sure to take Time for myself to write. I don't right. write. Yeah, you've like, been slacking on the writing. Yes. So uh, we get stuck in the day to day bullshit. It's true, and and I do I do a very similar thing at work where I'm kind of just focusing on what's right in front of me and just trying to make it and to do it and then tell myself that hey, you know what? If you if you at, at least you did it. So or, or you, you know you made it through another day. That's good enough. <laughs> that's not good enough. Not good. That's not good enough. No, um, I've been giving myself too much of a break. I think so. Yeah. That's kind of so. It's it's multiple things. It can mean a lot of different things, but it's more. I need to do more things for myself. Um, to be, and also for myself. Um, and also to better myself. So that's that's so 2018 shit. We'll, we'll cap that shit off by saying, not just our shit, but you know, a message to the listeners. You know, it's nothing. Nothing groundbreaking that we're saying, but a little friendly reminder. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Right. Uh, again, yes. ties back to people posting about their shit and never doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, what I would recommend is setting apart an hour a day to do that shit that's your, your goals, whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. Could be a new business. Could be writing, mm-hmm. uh, working on a book, uh, working out. Mm-hmm. Just do a little bit. It's it goes when you sometimes when you try to do too much at first, it's too much mentally, you're like, Well, that's too much. And then you psych yourself out. So baby steps is is my point. You know what I'm saying? D-steps. Like I've been going to the gym on and off, but I just do the bike and you know what I'm saying, if I can prove to myself that I can do more, then I just step mm-hmm. it up. But but that's one of the goals too. But yeah, baby steps. Guys. Yeah, I don't wanna be I don't wanna be too specific, but yeah, I have like you know, workout stuff, eating yeah. healthy, you know, all, all this like different things, but kind of more specific and like with dates and stuff like that. I have all that going nice. on. So yeah, I mean, it's Hot okay. dates? I wish. Uh, <laughs> oh, you mean like deadlines and shit yes. for yourself? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, Yeah, people, set a deadline. Yeah, so like, you know, if you're going to talk about resolutions, talk about, you know, what they are, what they mean or what they're going to do for you. I don't know who it was, but they were, they posted a picture, but this guy, well, I know, now I know who it is. Mm. I'm not going to say his name, but he posted a picture about, him and his wife, he uh, writing our goals down. 
Mm-hmm. This guy actually does stuff, so I know mm-hmm. he's real about it. It's not Dope. some bullshit. So I thought that was hot. Uh, cool. Let's go into some certain little topics, little uh, pop culture shit, mm-hmm. or just uh, different things, things that happen throughout the year. Um, uh, of course, everybody talks about Trump. We're not going to spend too much time with that shit. Mm. But, you know, this is the first year he got elected last year. Uh, this is his first kind of like full year. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of people hate I don't follow politics that much. Yeah. So we're not going to spend too much time there. Unfortunately. But one thing I'm going to say, though. With the jokes and the disses, we got to step it up, guys. Mm. We got the mm. orange, this, and the Cheeto jokes. And right. I'm kind of over we it. got to come up with some new jokes, with some new disses. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. Just because you got to hit or hit something with an actual example of why. Yeah. Uh, some substance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Of why you disagree with this, this, oh and that. God. Just call it, name calling is like juvenile to me when I read those posts. Mm-hmm. They don't actually like write why. They hate him or they just call yeah. him a Cheeto or make fun of his hairpiece. If pe- people got a platform, they're going to use it. And it's like, come on, guys, step it up. Yeah, I really, I, I like you, kind of don't don't follow all that. Yeah. I feel sort of bad for saying that, but yeah. also kind of not because, like, uh, I don't know how much my mental health is better for not yeah. <laughs> participating in it. That's but... why I stopped because I actually <laughs> used to, like, be hardcore, mm. you know, kind of like an online activist on some shit. Uh, and it was like I was just depressed all the time because it was just like <laughs> thinking about the gloom and doom. Uh, where you know what I'm saying, or where, if if I do form any kind of opinions uh, on it, or I do you know dive deeper into like politics or anything like that, I do it kind of privately too. I yeah. don't like to yeah, put it out there. I prefer all that to have much. like a face to face conversation. Yeah. Uh, instead of a online, online debate. Yeah. No. Some of them are cool, but most of them are just. I mean, just I kind of... I enjoy my fair share of trolling, as we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's you know. You gotta be selective. Uh, what did Trump do? I think he was beefing with the NFL this year. Oh, that's what you said. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you know, a little friendlier topic, sports, but it kind of stemmed from the yeah, yeah, yeah. How an American. So he was uh, the whole take a knee, which started with Kaepernick, probably like last year, maybe even two years ago, but it kind of exploded this year, which is kind of weird though because he he kind of lashed out on some of the players, and then all of a sudden. All these teams started doing it, which to me is the pussiest shit in the world because y'all weren't fucking backing up Kaepernick when he was doing it a couple of years ago. You're, now you're just doing it because of your disdain uh, towards fucking Trump. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. your heart's not in the right place. You're just mad at Trump and you want to put on a show. Oh, we're going to take a knee. Well, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of waters down the whole fucking message. Um, it does kind of also put Kaepernick in a little bit of a better position, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. As the uh, the unsung hero, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Which he deserves <laughs> And it. can also uh, show the fakeness of. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. fakeness going on in all sides mm, of this bullshit. Man. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you had people wanting to boycott the NFL because they were allowing, quote unquote, kneeling and protesting. And then you had people that wanted to boycott the NFL. Because they, they were, were backing them up. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So it was like, it was weird. Two, the two sides were boycotting. It was weird. So co- supposedly, people on Facebook, well, I guess I'm not watching football ever again. Like, whatever. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I know. You know you're going to be mad for a week or two and you're still going to watch your team because uh-huh. that's just the culture. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, it's weird to me that it's like, it's, I don't know. It's so weird to me because, and maybe and maybe this also highlights the fact that there are like big wigs involved in most of these like uh, decisions and things like that. But to me, I'm just like, you know, you're a coach. If you're a team, like you're coaching players. How do you not have some kind of unity and want to back each other up and stuff yeah. like that? That to me is just insane because that's a team sport. In order to play as a team, like I think there needs to be some kind of level of underlying like loyalty and backing up and yeah. supporting and stuff like that like it's a lot of personalities to it's get true i mean it's so it's so big so it's impossible. yeah um one of the main points of contention was basically that it was disrespectful towards <sighs> the troops and blah 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 yeah. when the original point of the shit was just kind of protesting the uh uh, most mostly based on the the police brutality mm-hmm. and you know how blacks were being treated blah blah, blah. yeah um and it was not about the troops. As a matter of fact, Kaepernick kind of reached out or somebody reached out to him, mm-hmm. a, a veteran. And he asked him, like, hey, I don't want to be disrespectful towards the troops. So how should I do it? And it was the the soldier that told him, well, do a knee instead of just sitting down. So that actually is coming from an actual 
uh, you know, uh, military uh, person personnel there. Um, but you know, people just like to be involved and get in, share their little opinions. Guys, all, all I'm saying is this, guys. I'm not judging you guys if you're listening to this shit right now, but before you get into, especially on social media, it's <laughs> social media is so huge. It's such weird, so such a big impact on society. But like, check your your intentions when you're posting shit. Are are you doing it because you really believe this shit? Because guess what, you're gonna be judged on it. Those, For one, those, that is definitely one of the things that you're gonna be judged on. Two, <laughs> are you uh, or do you just want some little attention? <laughs> and also, are you you know, uh, genuinely keeping an open mind uh, as far as the other side. That's one thing I like to tell people is like, yeah, have your thoughts, your opinions, but try to look at things from different perspectives, different angles, try to walk in other people's shoes. Uh, but you know, whatever. A lot of that was bullshit. It's just a big old fucking show. It's just a big old thing to be like, you can think what you want, but you can't say it or do anything about it. And no. that's just ridiculous. What else? This one's kind of related. Kendall Jenner, was there like a little, uh, D knows more about this than I do. Yeah, only because, uh, you know, I kind of saw a few things on Facebook about it. Now, t- uh, to be honest, I never watched the actual commercial. I never see it because if. I it, remember, now that I remember I did. You did? I did? Well, not when it was playing, but, you know, I clicked play on something uh-huh. and yeah. Well, yeah, because if. Uh, in people case were anyone, talking about it. In case anyone doesn't know, we do not have TV here at House of no, D. No, we don't. Uh, so we are not exposed to commercials and things like that. So, um. Yeah. So the only way we get things is usually online. So uh, basically what happened, I guess, and I, I kind of read a whole article on it, but it was just this massive uh, misrepresentation and also like appropriation of a very serious movement to do something very basic, like sell fucking Pepsi. Like, yeah. you know, it, it was uh, there's been a lot going on, obviously, in our country. Um, all these protests and this crazy shit that's going on obviously you know I, like i said i don't keep up with things but i do you know i do read things i, I can well, see what's happening also, so. right so it's hard to miss it but um you know basically it kind of poked fun at all of it you know the um the protesters themselves um were very kind of basic Protesting what though uh, exactly they they weren't in the in the in the, in the commercial. commercial. Yeah, in the commercial, it was. But there um, was cops involved. So there was yeah, it was a whole police brutality. It was a whole setup, right? So they had a bunch of people that you know it wasn't very clear what they were protesting. Just like you said, what was what? Well, we don't know. Being very vague, right? Um. So not only that, like apparently the people didn't look too bothered by anything. They looked they a little saying. happy, <laughs> uh, so to speak. Um. Also, you know, we're we're kind of dancing and and uh, things as they were protesting marching supposedly um <laughs> like a party right exactly and this entices uh, Ka- uh kendall uh to step away from i guess a photo shoot She's um like, what's going on over here right i want to be part of it so she takes a blonde wig off i guess and wipes her lipstick off and then i guess that makes her ready for like oh she's ready to protest. yeah she's ready to protest now <laughs> now, now things are getting real okay because she stopped this photo shoot and that's getting re- so then um you know uh in the no one seems you know so no one seems very upset about anything i don't know why the hell uh jenna would have gone there but she uh gets to the front um looks at an office an officer i guess and like hands him some pepsi that she got from somewhere <laughs> and so it's like you know he, he takes a sip or whatever and then um everyone's happy after that point Damn, so shouts to pepsi for- yeah for curing all the if that's all we needed i mean where have you been world. yeah i know what the hell <laughs> You guys have been in business this whole time. You had the answer oh to the cure. God. I you just, had the cure to the shit. So, is it, this is ridiculous. Okay, so um, you know, I don't know. You know, Pepsi apologized and all this kind of stuff, and they immediate almost immediately pulled it. Uh, you know, they they didn't move forward with anything else on that rollout and stuff. And it's you know, uh, Jenner, uh, Kendall or whatever got a lot of you know got a lot of flack <laughs> for it as well for her participation. Yeah. Um, so it was just a big old mess, I think. And um, I don't know what what the idea was behind it to be honest but it was just incredibly insensitive um from pepsi's right. end is weird from kendall's and i understand because people like her i would think they there's no such thing as bad publicity Guess. with that type of person but with the pepsi shit but eh, whatever as a, as a big company using very serious things to sell fucking soda like really yeah. like you there's other ways to do that you know that's the bottom line it was just it was just insensitive as, as far as people though like as far as uh, we can, that that too, like even it's it's wrong and it's dumb, but 
it's also back to my anger thing or just being letting things affect you. Mm. It's like, yeah, that's fucking stupid, but it's also like there's bigger shit to worry about. Right. And a lot of you motherfuckers are mad, probably still drinking Pepsi. So <laughs> <laughs> I really don't drink Pepsi, to be honest. But yeah, that shit's corny as fuck. I it's, did see the commercial. It's, yeah. And it's interesting that your first question was, what are they protesting? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure that's what everyone's first question was. <laughs> so weird. Oh, my God. Fucking Pepsi. I'm, I sure hope the person who wrote that up was fired. Good it's Lord. weird, though, because even I'll still drink Pepsi. Uh, I drink it because it's not not on my radar enough. Like it's not as you know, what I'm saying like it's it's weird what makes society jump up and get crazy and shit. Uh, I drink Pepsi with my Cavassier. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. But yeah, that was so. That was just a big misstep. Um, like <laughs> at the height of a lot of things going on, the Pepsi it's a thinking. weird thing. Like, it's who so approves strange. These things? Yeah, I don't know how it that's got. That's more passed. the point of this conversation. Is like it's strange. Yeah, because it's dumb and it's wrong, but like, it's what you're putting how out. How does this there? shit get approved? Yeah, like who approves this shit? People that post their resolutions like, on just Facebook. Just keep it simple. Yeah, that's no, right? that, that's exactly the kind of people. That, like, like, what are our standards? Because for commercials, like, keep it simple. Like, just have a have a party or mm-hmm. drinking soda, whatever. That's it. Don't I know. Need to get all crazy. There's <laughs> all political. And yeah, shit. there's no Pepsi in protest. Okay. Oh, God. Alrighty. So yeah, so that's unfortunate. I think that's a big misstep by the company. Yeah. They probably could have done something way you more, you know, way better. I, I need to be more. I actually should be more like aware and conscious of shit. It's just there's so much to keep track of. Who oh, to avoid? Card. You know what I'm saying? There's mm-hmm. so much shit mm-hmm. that we use products in our daily lives. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it all they all kind of go back just, to like three oh, main companies or something yeah. like that. It's it's ridiculous. It's it I is really all these hard. Products. Yeah. Um, so stay woke yeah. though. Yeah, stay woke. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just saying like no, yeah, I know you're being just it. understand like the the at least depths, be aware at least. the depths that these at companies will go to to just sell Pepsi. How is your heart's in the right place? It's so dumb. Uh hurricanes. A lot of hurricanes this year. Oh yes. What are the it names? Was... There's multiple names. Oh yeah, there was a bunch. So unfortunately. Me working uh where I do work, um dealt a lot with uh, some of this weather related stuff because we mm. kind of supported things. Uh, but um, it was uh, the three of them, the three big ones, Harvey, Irma and Maria. So okay. this, this storm season was very intense for multiple reasons um, to go kind of in depth about it um, where I work we haven't experienced a season like this in a long time. So that's how I knew it was very different. Yeah, it was unique. Yes. Um, one, because there were so many, um, so many actual hurricanes declared. Also, uh, the number of major hurricanes. So that's, I think it's category four and five. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever. So that's the highest, I believe. And um, uh, so there, it was consecutive, the most intense, and then the costliest um, in, let's see... Uh, since, yeah, it's just, it's been one of the costliest since like, yeah, ni- like 1936. Yeah. Oh, for real? 36, yeah. Man. So uh, records began in 1851, it says. So it's uh, the fifth most active season since then. Damn. Okay. So not only that, but um, it costs over, I think it costs just under $4 billion, $400 billion. Um, dollars. Damn. So, but the pretty much all of the money and this is this is really important too and, and i'll kind of get into that it opens other conversations about that but um with the with the amount of money that was actually uh, that, that that these storms cost mo- they all came from pretty much three harvey irma and maria mm-hmm. those are the ones that those are three that did um, almost the lion's share yeah so they did pretty much everything now uh harvey uh harvey was actually the the costliest uh, in history so it was in that houston area yes so that was um just under two billion uh, uh two two hundred yeah billion well so, let me say this real quick to interrupt you just mm-hmm. uh condolences uh it's very tragic rest in peace right. anybody that lost a life or was injured or Affected lost in any, any way at all yeah. uh, people lost their homes right. houses, so and that's what I want to go into in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff too. Um, we wish you the best and hopefully things work out and you bounce back. It is a process, but our thoughts are with you in general. Mm-hmm. It was, it was really bad. <laughs> it was, uh, it cost a lot of money, but um, through 
all the stuff that did happen, all the negative, there were some pretty interesting things that were kind of opened up and that people started questioning. Mm. Um, so a lot of the questioning was why was Houston a very, um, modern major city? How was it hurt and affected so bad, so yeah. intensely by this hurricane? So like they weren't prepared. Right. Not only that, why. but it started going deeper. So I saw lots of things. Uh, I, I saw lots of news things about it, but, um, just to kind of sum it up, um, the city is planned all fucked up basically there there it's it's planned poorly and uh i think things were overlooked in order to expand so it mm. starts raising those kinds of questions like one they sacrifice certain things for to, for growth right but i think it also starts raising the questions of were people made aware of this yeah. before it was done so yeah. is is there being some kind of hiding going on or is there um are, are maybe we just not active enough in our local stuff uh because you know this is stuff that gets presented this is yeah. all public record stuff so if you're like not people acti- are being active maybe i mean maybe. It, it just, just it just, raises a bunch yeah, it just raises questions. a bunch of questions so that's one of them definitely why was houston hit so hard but then um on top of that when we start talking about flood insurance and mm. uh homes being damaged and why do these people live here for so long if they've been hit by, you know, how many hurricanes and blah, blah, blah. So then that thing. that's a whole other thing. That is a big other conversation. And um, to kind of sum it up, um, flood insurance was never meant to be, a, was never meant to be offered to people as a permanent fix. It was, it was meant, it's meant to be temporary. It's meant to say, uh, okay, you, you've moved here. We understand now your, your home is high risk. Yeah. Please get this. But, after Un- a understand event. no but understand that you should not live here because yeah. this is high risk <laughs> so get out yeah. now it turned into something else okay so however it happened over is how time. it happened but over time it just became a thing where um homes were basically costing way more money than they're worth they're costing way more money to insure than they're worth so they are draining um all kinds of stuff but that's beyond the point because this is insurance companies and all kinds of stuff so they're they've got their own thing but Mm. it just it does start opening up questions about flood policies about flood zones about things like that that maybe weren't accurately updated too because then we had homes that were flooded that were never in the flood zone for their insurance now why is that Mm. because records were not updated or kept right or something so now we're affected right so it just i mean with these hurricanes i understand that it was very devastating but i think it really opened up a lot of important topics that we probably don't think about um unless we're directly affected by it but like the people of houston should be into this you know what i'm saying mm. Pe- you know uh people who own homes stuff like that maybe i guess because like, it doesn't happen every single year it's not really common it's a zone but it doesn't happen yeah i mean if you look at it the, makes people drop their guard if you look at the bigger picture it's it's i mean over years and however it's done or whatever i mean when we're talking about debt and money and all this kind of stuff yeah. like we we just have we just need to be careful i'm sure it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's and, complex but right either way sh- you know Shouts and thoughts to to the people affected. Uh, yeah, we even did an episode mm-hmm. with the homie Ocho Sanchez. Uh, you know, he lives out there in Houston, so he gave us a report of what was going on. So check out that episode. We'll uh, talk about that a little bit later. Yep, highlight. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, so, I'm noticing these notes. A lot of it's some dark topics. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it but was really a year that. I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't like, a bad year. No, it really made people there was some, think. I, yeah. I, it really, it really some, gave a people a lot to think about. That's what I'm got saying. Got brought to light in different yeah. areas. Because mm-hmm. we had, you know, uh, that Vegas shooting, which was, oh, yeah. I don't know how many people died, like 55. It was a massacre, though. Yeah, it was a huge massacre. A lot of questions uh, still yet to be answered. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not going to go into the conspiracy theory shit, mm-hmm. but... You know, yeah, it's just, it's it's uh, it's weird. It's a lot of uh, a lot of questions. At my at my work, even it's so. This is it's so crazy crazy to think about. But I mean, this is the direction that we're heading to as a society, I guess. But at my job, we had a um, an active shooter training. Oh shit! What to do if we yeah. have an active shooter in the building? At work, right? Man. So I'm like. This is some really intense material. This is like really important. It's, it's that big of a. It's a. Yeah. It's a thing. It is. Um. So it, it's crazy, but I, yeah, I just think 
this year was very intense. It, 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 was very it caused intense. people to ask a lot of questions, I think, um, which I think kind of goes back to me when uh, relates to me when I'm like, yeah, it's just good enough. You know, I think we were all kind of OK with being good enough and knowing just enough. Right. No, we, we no, yeah. need to be asking questions. We need to be involved. Stuff like that. So I think this is a big Shit can happen at like any that. moment. Uh, oh, man, it could pop whether up. Whether it's a, a mass shooting or just, just some random shit. Yeah. But it's pretty disturbing. Yeah, when somebody decides to do something like that. Scary, definitely. For sure. The other one was the, the case for the, the Mesa, Arizona shooting. Oh, man. It happened, in, I think, last year or something. But the case, he was, uh, they were found not guilty, I think. But one of the things, the only thing I want to talk about with that, I don't want to spend too much time, was that people, even myself, until later on, uh, we were under the impression that the person. Now, if y'all remember, listeners, it's this is the one where the the cop was yelling out all these kind of Simon says types of orders at the mm-hmm. hotel room for this guy that was there for work. They were the cops were called because I guess he had his BB gun out for his. He's a pest control type of person. Cops show up, but people, even myself, when you hear this guy barking orders to this guy in the hotel, you think that's the guy that did the shooting. Mm-hmm. And it's not. It's two different people. There's the shooter, and he's the one that was tried. And then there's the one that was barking the orders, Mm -hmm. who, in my opinion, should have been probably guiltier in a sense because he's the one that raised, escalated the whole shit. Everybody, yeah. But that guy's a higher ranking dude. So it's just, they're not going to fuck with him. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? And his dad is somebody higher up, too. I I learned through other shit. I read up on shit where, again, not not too detailed, but. That basically, yeah, they had like a meeting right after that. They got their story straight. And that guy that was shot in the orders, he like retired right after that. Mm -hmm. I think he even moved out of the country. Which is probably smart on his end. (laughs) But it's just crazy because obviously they know that they were in the wrong. But Mm -hmm. yeah, this guy still got found not guilty. If you're you're wondering why people are kneeling down at football games and shit. (sighs) But yeah, that guy got off. What else we got? Um, Me too. Oh, yeah. Hashtag me too. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Can, what, you're, you're can, you ma- can you mansplain that for me? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, to me, I even asked one of my homegirls, because my, my only question was, I understand, to me, I guess it's uh, girls coming out and trying to expose certain people or just share their story mm-hmm. about, it's based in sexual harassment, but there's levels to that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So people are sharing their stories. Of course, you had the extreme examples with uh, high-powered people, politicians, Hollywood, Harvey Weinstein types. Hollywood was on one. Uh, but my question to my homegirl was, what exactly is this shit? Is this sexual harassment or is it the rape thing or what is it? Well, it's all of it. All of it matters. And my thing was like, I'm not. this isn't wrong or right. My only thing was like, well, kind of like, if because rape is rape. And then... Getting your ass grabbed is still wrong, but mm-hmm. it's not rape. So you know what I'm saying? It's I, all it's all wrong and it all deserves attention. Right. The way but the it, way I understand it is that Me Too is just for people who have experienced yeah. sexual harassment or assault, I think. Anything that's kind yeah. of sexual related. I think that's all it is. And sometimes like, it's men too. Yes. It's not yeah. I guess you're right. Um and that's yeah, that's really good to point if out. If you want to hit that angle, I mean uh from a, I've been like I've had little weird nothing crazy and I'm not gonna even put myself in the same category as women because women whatever I've dealt with it's they do it at times a thousand mm-hmm. you know what I mean but yeah but as a dude you kind of get you get laughed at if you were to bring some shit up and it is you know what I'm saying because it it's happens to me right and that's also perpetuated I think in pop culture and things that we see uh, on TV because when you talk about that it just brings uh, it reminds me of uh, New Girl that mm. show New Girl um, mm. well you know Schmidt is like always being like harassed basically by his boss like oh, she's like right. a, a major bitch or whatever at least in the beginning yeah. Um, but it's yeah it's a woman and yeah. she's doing it to him and I think she does make a lot of like sexual uh, remarks and things like that to him too and it's and it's supposed to be funny yeah, you know, it's, it's supposed, supposed to be, be funny. yeah funny on the show. And I'm just like that is rude as hell. Yeah, <laughs> I cannot. Be- I can Im- imagine talking to someone like that, but especially being like a, a, someone, a leader, a person in a position of power. So I've, yeah, it's. I've it's, had it happen to me at work in social situations. Super minimized for men. Where kind of girls try to steal a kiss or grab me. Mm-hmm. Uh, gay dudes have grabbed me a bunch of times. Oh. <laughs> but you can't say shit because you're, you look like the it's like oh come on man you know. It's, just deal with it. You're you're fine. And it's like, 
Yeah, I am. Fine, but still, still wrong. wrong. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but still, uh, I feel extremely Excuse bad me. for the women that have to deal with it. But I'm sure there's, it's so complicated. If we're dealing with just the root of it, it's fucking horrible. But I'm sure there's people going to take that as an opportunity to uh, take advantage of it. So and, it. I like, and I won't get into detail, but I will say that um, the Me Too thing, um, just understand too that for people that, I know, I know me personally, I've experienced multiple levels from, yeah. from very light to to some pretty bad stuff. But, um, you know, it's just, it's, we shouldn't be minimizing it. I don't think. Um, and I think that's what, that's what happened is everyone was just like, you really don't have a right to talk or that's not yeah, that no, bad no, or something it. like that. Yeah. So I think that was the, a lot of the backlash too, that came out of it and everything, which I think is a little rude. Okay. Um, which is why I didn't really participate. I, I didn't want to do anything. So yeah, to be out subjected. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that goes back to why, you know, why didn't you report your rape? Right. Well, because it's you're opening yourself up to all kinds of shit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and if especially if it's somebody of power, mm -hmm. you know, they're gonna try to discredit you. So you know, I, I I've been my female friends will tell you from I always tell my female be careful, guys. Mm. Guys are fucking weirdos because a lot of you here, here's a different point. A lot of you girls, uh, you know, want to be feminist and empowered, <laughs> and you think you're like us, and oh yeah. Want to hang out with the guys or, you know, let your guard down and just mm -hmm. go out on dates and drink and get all crazy with some guy you just met. Uh, that comes from that whole, oh, I can do whatever I want. I'm just as strong as right. you kind of mentality. It stems from the feminist mentality. Like it's a, a twisted version of it. Mm -hmm. Not the true version, not the true message. But I was like, ladies, stop. Like mm -hmm. you're putting yourself in jeopardy. Like w the likeliness of something happening, the chances are low. But they're there. Mm -hmm. And if it happens, you're going to feel horrible. Like, you're for one, it's going to change your life. For two, you're going to think back, hindsight, what I should have done, what I could have done. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always telling my female friends, stop fucking around. Don't <laughs> fucking be very careful with the partying and with the guys you just met. And, you know, unless you want a bone, well, then we, bone. But we, we appreciate you. Yeah. It's just but, like, um, I, would, I would go a step further to say... That is something that even men need to be yeah. cautious of. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, things could happen to you. You know, mm -hmm. um, how many how many times have we been seeing um a lot of these uh fake rape cases too being yeah. brought up and all this kind of stuff? Like, you Whoa. do not put you be careful with the situations you put yourself in. Um, you know, you have to you know don't be stupid too. Like, there's a chance that you're gonna get got some way. Maybe you don't get beat. That's but, gonna be like people that I got money though. Um, <laughs> yes, me. I'm just using it as an example, but I'm yeah. saying that 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 Everybody is that's careful. where you find yourself when you don't look out for yourself. Yeah, right. So that that's whether what's whether it's men or women. You gotta have your guard up. Right. Be smart. Be smart out there. Yeah. So yeah, we'll stop there with that one. I mean, you can go on and on with that one, and then you know, just. Uh, but I think even just those that we talked about. Yeah. Um, I just totally goes back to the whole like. It, it's just a lot of questions were raised this year. I think. Well, I, I'm I glad. I'm, I'm glad people are being exposed. <laughs> right. The ones that are really doing bad shit, but at the same time, I feel like society. Certain celebrity people love celebrities. Mm. They'll over certain if certain time passes, they'll they'll forget this shit. Like today's society, they'll just they'll still be fans of certain people. Yeah. Um, that's just the way it is. If you love their entertainment, if you love their music enough, or if you love their sports enough, you'll, true. you'll, uh, you know, you'll lie to yourself and just like, ah, well, you know, so, you'll still be a fan. Someone grilled me a little bit about that. Um, they, uh, they asked me, cause I said, oh, I don't listen to Chris Brown. And they're no. like, well, why not? I'm like, cause he beat up Rihanna. It's, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I don't, I don't gotta listen to him. Uh, so then he's like, oh, okay. So you don't listen to Chris Brown, but you listen to, uh, triple X. Um, where he's accused of doing all these like terrible things to his uh, ex fiance or ex girlfriend or something like that, how can you, how can you justify it? I was like, well, they, I don't know that he did it for sure yet. Yeah, accused is different. Yeah, um, so it's like it's hard because well, like it's you, brown, you, it's proven. It's but just yeah, weird. A bunch of gray areas, it's just yeah. the and it's just like you said, like you're gonna keep doing some shit. So yeah, yeah. like I probably shouldn't really like triple X well, because for one, it's hard to keep track of it all for one. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's just hard, but. Yeah, it's hard. Stay woke. Uh, well, part of it is just don't be also like if you're going to be vocal, 
social media yet again. Right. Uh, and, you know, live that life. But don't right. be vocal and then go back. Like me, I admit, like, I contradict myself all day. All it's just We're not the perfect. nature of humans. Yeah. And I think, but don't uh, pretend to be all high and mighty on some shit. I don't think everything's always going to make sense either. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah, but. A ton of gray areas. Yeah. But moving on, we already talked about taking these shit. Uh, McGregor Mayweather was a big deal. That is, we wanted to have a little bit of sports talk. We did a little football shit. That was the fight between Mayweather uh, and McGregor, Conor McGregor, the UFC fighter, MMA fighter. Uh, they worked it out to, you know, let's have a boxing match between these guys. And it got hyped up so much. And it was this huge deal. Uh, all I'll say about I watched the fight. I was rooting for McGregor, even though he is, I'm not a fan of his. But I thought it'd be cool if the guy that's not supposed to win wins uh-huh. because I hate Mayweather too. Uh, but it was just crazy. It got the whole country going. Man. Even racially speaking, there was a lot of race involved. Uh, so-called boxing purists and the MMA. Da, da, da. There were some people watching it that I would never imagine that they would that they would watch well, it. Well, that's how big of a deal I it was. know. <laughs> well, what's funny to me is that events like this and things like this, they kind of like, it's on a different level, but like the Trump thing when he was running, it like exposes people. It shows their mm. true colors. But this is funnier because this is sports. Yeah, they're getting into heated ass Very arguments. Very serious. Yeah, heated. <sighs> you know, like guys, it's not that big a deal. So one of the things I was talking about on a, on a past episode, excuse me, was how like guys were just attacking these. Oh. Some girls just <laughs> like McGregor because they think he's hot or whatever. I remember that. It's like fuck you. You don't know about. Sports and da, 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 like just attacking these. That chicks. was the Anson episode. Yeah. That. So I was like, yeah, you know, like I said, it was a crazy event, uh, <laughs> super hyped up. It was fun to watch. In my opinion, yeah, of course you want to win, but at the end of the day, both those dudes got paid. Got paid, and that's all they give a fuck about. Right. Yeah, they want to win, but they got paid. Because <laughs> uh, even somebody else on a different podcast was like, yeah, Mayweather. You know, he didn't like that McGregor was disrespecting boxing. Like, he doesn't give a fuck about disrespecting <laughs> boxing. There's a paycheck involved. Oh a God. huge paycheck. Stop giving really... these guys this credit. Oh, my God. It's all money. Everything, most The majority of shit out there is just money generated, money uh, uh, motivated. So, yeah. But, yeah, it was fun. It was cool. What else we got? I just want to move on to some celebrity deaths. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because we're fucking we've been. Even, yeah, we, we gotta fucking wrap it up. Oh yeah, we nah, not like right now, but I'm saying we're Cele- like in an hour right now. Mm, celebrity deaths. And I gotta take a piss. So let me let me pause. Let me yeah, take a piss. I actually have to pee too. All right, let's take a piss. Okay. We're gonna pause. You guys won't notice it because it's gonna be seamless. But we're pausing. Oh my god. And we're back. Mm. All righty, so uh, you know, drain the lizard. We're back, <laughs> feeling good. Is that Jack really Daniels a kicking in, huh? Is that yeah. really a saying? Oh. Yeah, drain the loot. There's a bunch of them. They're all <laughs> retarded. They're stupid. <laughs> Guys are dumb. Yeah. Unfortunately, we run the world, but you know. Uh, yeah. Celebrity deaths. People we lost. People we you know. People we look up to. People we, we posted to Facebook about. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as bad as 2016 because mm-hmm. that was bad. Ugh. That's gonna go down in history of like, holy shit, we lost a lot of people. But we still lost some good ones. You know, and my thing is, that it's sadder, obviously, when it's somebody that's kind of young. Like, holy shit, they still could have lived another 20, 30, 40 years, depending on who it is. And some of the people on this list kind of had a, maybe, well, just like, actually just one or two had a, they were already older, so they had a good run. I don't feel bad. Uh, do your thing. But yeah, either way, this is just like a list that we just kind of cherry picked, uh, some highlights. This isn't a list made up of we're not saying we look up to these people or look down. Some of them we like, some of them, you know. Just I'm the looking, ones that popped out. I'm looking at one of them, it's a little questionable. <laughs> uh, but uh, what's the first one, dude? Uh, Chester Bennington. Chester so, Bennington. I'll let you speak on that. Right. Um, I, you know, that. Who is he? He is the lead singer of Linkin Park. Um, and this this one kind of hurt me because uh, I'm a I'm a really big Linkin Park fan. Like, I'm not super out there with yeah. it or whatever, but I definitely listen to their music quite a bit. Um, have for several years since they came out um so it it did kind of affect me in a way like because uh you know chester was a voice to me when i was actually kind of young too mm. so um you know as they did their thing you know i did my thing too but uh so that one it did uh, strike a chord with he me. was young he was he was pretty young um he was pretty young and then um uh 
in, I think you have to talk about them both together since they were uh, best friends and they both passed similarly. Um, but also Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell. Mm-hmm. That's Big my deal. boy. Yeah. So these Sound two. Hard. Right. Um, it's just. Uh, it's it's just intense because these are like two of the really big like really um known voices I think yeah. um and not just in their genre it's like but different eras but yeah respected yeah mm-hmm. so um it's just it was you know a a loss as far as you know artistically creatively things like that but um it's just those guys came out of nowhere not really at Lincoln Park they're dope uh, mm-hmm. my story with them is that uh, my buddy bought the CD I burned it. The not really ex- Park one? Yeah, the first one. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not expecting much. <clears throat> and then I heard it and I fucking loved it. The funny part, the story I've told before is that I listened to it so much that I couldn't really listen to them anymore. <laughs> I burned my own self oh, out. Man. I literally had that CD in my car for like two weeks in a row. I don't know if I can do that. On constant rotation. That's how much I loved it. Mm-hmm. But it got me to the point where like I just... I don't even want to hear because I heard because I know the second album is supposedly really really good too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is that, Meteora? Uh, yeah. So, oh, you like these guys? Are, Meteora, like, ah, I, 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 I abused it. Like, I, I burned my own self out uh, yeah. because I loved the first yeah, album so much. No, what I meant was I don't think I can burn myself out on things. Um, I, like willingly. It sounds weird. I, it, I mean, it does. But no, it's, it I, happened. It was a. Uh, it sounds weird, but it happened. <laughs> That's my. But they came out of nowhere. They had the hip hop vibe uh, mixed with the singing. They kind of, they weren't corny. They sounded dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Shinoda with the raps. So rest in very peace, eclectic, Chester very Bennington. Creative. Yeah. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that, was, that was sad. That, yeah. What was it? It was uh, it was suicide, right? I, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, next on the list is like an old school guy who kind of, you know, rest in peace, Chester. Uh, on the list is Chuck Berry. Where, we'll just talk really quickly. He's obviously a rock legend. He had a good run. He was older, so it's not as as tragic. Uh, we had a few older people die. Huh? We had a few older yeah. people pass. But my story with that one is uh, not that I'm an expert, but I know who Chuck Berry is, and I had a conversation at work a long time ago uh, with somebody who's who knows about music. Uh, he was like a rockabilly dude, and he like. But the one thing where he fucked up on was during a conversation where I lost all respect was in his mind. He was, I thought he was joking. He said, yeah, it's crazy how like, you know, Elvis influenced Chuck Berry. And I'm like, because <laughs> this is somebody that was. You think before. he misspoke maybe? Nah, because I asked him again. Like, uh-huh. Are you being serious? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Elvis. you repeat it back to? Oh, no, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, okay, it okay. was like, I did it like three times. Yeah, I was like, like I just want to Yeah. <laughs> and then I told him, no, that's wrong. But I, but again, back then I was kind of in a good place. So I'm not going to argue. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Keep believing what you want to believe. I'm not going to argue with you, you know what I'm saying? You never told me he was a rockabilly dude. Yeah, now he, this makes him worse. He, yeah. He, <laughs> you know, he had he had his own eclectic like taste in music. Oh. So that's why I respected him oh. until he said that shit. He was on some, uh, you know, <laughs> Elvis influenced Chuck Berry. That's terrible. When it's obviously the, the other, other way, way around. around. So that's my story with that. Rest in peace, Chuck Berry. White we people. talked, we touched on Chris Cornell. Mm-hmm. Uh, D said he was best friends with Chester. I did not oh, know that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He also was, it was suicide. I believe. And drug related. Mm-hmm. Well, not drug related, but he, he also was, uh, mm-hmm. one of the things that people talk about are how people are on uh, antidepressants. Mm. So he's also, that's Medication. one of the things about mm-hmm. his story. But who knows? Behind the scenes, who the fuck knows? Ugh. Very young. So sad. He's one of my favorites. Soundgarden's my shit. I grew up in that era. I'm from the 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, teenager in the 90s. Uh, mm-hmm. Bad motor finger. Even before uh, Black Hole Sun and all that shit. Uh, Chris Cornell, yeah. Who's Pearl Jam and Soundgarden, one of my favorite shits. So rest in peace, Chris. Uh, we got Hugh Hefner. Yeah, another another older. He's he's the one I kind of struggle with. Because it's like, <laughs> he's looked up to, and then this is a whole the whole celebrity, and you know people bowing down to celebrities and idols. And... <laughs> But there's like to me, you know, some of the stories are a little creepy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, goes back to the Me Too shit. There was a meme that was kind of funny that said, uh, "Oh, it seems like this is like right before the Me Too shit came out. When Hugh Hefner died, it's like it like lifted this the protective shield around these creepy old dudes, uh-huh. and they're getting exposed now. 
It was right yeah. when the Me Too shit came out. So you don't know how you, f- how, you know how to feel about it. I mean, either way, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not, he's just a dude. Like, right, I don't look up right, to anybody right. for one. Doesn't affect you. Yeah, it's like, I don't mm-hmm. have a subscription to Playboy. Mm-hmm. I don't, uh, you know, I don't give a fuck. It's just another dude. Uh, but yeah, I think it's important. I'll say this. Uh, listeners, I'm not trying to take your fun away. That's why sometimes I struggle with certain shit and talking about certain shit. Mm. I'm not trying to take your fun away, but you know, just check who you look up to. These fuckers are all like, they're all human. They're all susceptible to, don't look up to anybody is my point. Don't put anybody on a fucking pedestal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, there's a good chance they'll disappoint you. So it's cool to be a fan, but don't idolize these people, man. You know what I'm saying? Gotta be careful with that. Don't idolize, don't prop them up. Because, nah, like some of these people are weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who else? The simpler you keep your life, the the less disappointment you'll have. <laughs> Tom Petty. I love Tom Petty. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's, the, that's the dude. Uh, sh- I mean, he wasn't that old. He just died. Some people just die sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But rest in peace, Tom Petty. He had tons of classics. Uh, I mean, this is somebody I really, really like. You know, since the when MTV first started, he's been around since those days. I was a youngster watching all of his videos since back then. And the videos got cooler and cooler and mm-hmm. better and better. Uh, he's a legend. Plain and simple. He's in a lot of people's top fucking five. I mean, he's, yeah. a, he's a fucking legend. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Tom Petty. Adam West, mm-hmm. who is Batman from back in the days. He, he was Batman. <laughs> but then he had a resurgence. I think... To me, in my opinion, is the Family Guy shit. Oh, yeah. He played himself on Family Guy, and it was just hilarious. He's kind of like a, you know, a cultural, kind of like a pop culture, kind of a, I don't know if an icon, but he's definitely up there. He's hilarious. He was productive. He was busy. He was relevant, quote unquote. I hate mm-hmm. that word. Uh, till the day he died, and he was, he was funny, you know. And I used to watch the damn Batman shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I used to watch that shit. So when he came back out on Family Guy, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Adam West, oh. he's the shit. Uh, and then finally, this one's actually hit, hits home a little bit, is Reggie Osei, which is Combat Jack, Combat Jack Radio. That's a podcast. This is more hip-hop related, guys. So if you're into hip-hop and podcasts, you'll know who he is. If you're not, it's not going to affect you. He's not a big celebrity, but I'm going to speak on it because it's a part of the hip-hop family hip-hop world he his podcast is check it out combat jack radio basically interviewing the who's who of uh hip-hop mostly a lot of times you know the legends the the golden era shit Mm. he himself was a lawyer before that and he used to represent a lot of these artists and then he kind of he hated his job he quit and then he just came out as a podcaster not knowing really what the fuck was going to happen kind of blew up Mm -hmm. And he got cancer earlier this year, a, a few months ago. And then he just found a few out. months later, yeah. yeah. So I don't know why it was so late to be detected. Uh, but then a few months later, he passed. Uh, so big loss in the hip hop community and the podcast community. But yeah, it could, just like that, a few months later, he's in high spirits. And then boom, he's gone. That's a, well, um, so rest in peace. I think we would be... You know, it's not on the list here, but I, mm-hmm. I think we would really not do 2017 justice, right? If we uh, didn't mention Who else did? Lil Peep. Oh, shit. He's not on the list. Mm-hmm. Lil Peep. Because, yeah, we put him on the show's list. Rest in peace, Lil Peep. We talked about it before. Well, did, were you on the podcast? No. I don't think so. So you talk about it then. Oh, well, I don't really want to talk too much about it because people were getting very up in arms about it. But let's just say okay. that. Um, yeah, and we're going to touch on this in the show section two in a bit. But basically, he, uh, you know, overdosed. And so a lot of people, it, it's, it kind of brought out a lot of ugliness in people, which, uh-huh. you know, celebrity deaths kind of do. Um, so regardless, um, yeah, when everything came out, you know, it showed that uh, his drugs were laced with something that he was not aware of. And, um, you know, there's, uh, it just, again, asked a lot of questions, you know, what? People are wanting to know, you know, if you live like that every day, then how could you accidentally do this or how can you be surprised type thing? Yeah. So, like I said, it asks, it makes people ask a lot of questions. So it was a kind of a big thing, I think, on social media um, as well, as as sometimes these things can tend yeah. to be. People but, got a lot of free time. 
young, really young dude. Um, yeah, really, yeah, uh huh. Uh, pretty. So what's what's the backstory? Talented. You know a little bit about him? Yeah, he's you know only because I started doing research um, after the fact. Okay. Um, I, to be honest, I was never really a fan. Uh, we knew the homie um, Tuzani was was bringing him down. Um, so I knew that I needed to be to me whenever I go to a show, um, especially if I'm going to support so someone. You educate yourself a little. Bit. Right. I need to know something, you know, or I'm listening to this artist for like a month straight before I go yeah. to the show. Something like that, you know, so I do stuff you, like that. You, you dive in. Right. So that's what I did. I start, you know, I started kind of doing that. So all these things are like little and, you know, I don't really have a, an actual stand on it or whatever. But basically he was very interesting. He combined a lot of um, music styles, I think. I think he even had like a live band at the show that we were at or he had some live instruments. Yeah, he was he combined the, the emo rock with the uh, like beats like too. The yeah, shit. but he also sang like it yeah. was um. so it was very it wasn't interesting. No, so shit. I mean, he might not be everyone's cup of tea or whatever, but yeah. uh, fact of the matter is he was super young. He was 21, I believe. Um, he was super young and, you know, for whatever reason, he was getting really famous. So, um, you know, it's kind of a, that, that's sad, um, I guess in a way, you know, um, you think that someone maybe has potential, but who knows? It um, seems like you were bothered by the people were bashing the, he's glorifying drugs, right. so on and so forth, mm -hmm. being very nasty about it yeah. on social media. It seems like that part bothered you a little. It bit. was. It brought out some, like I said, some ugliness in people and a lot of like misinterpretation and, and just kind of judgmental stuff. But, you know, people were... A, a, people are so sensitive that if you speak on something or if you talk about your experiences or you talk about something that you've done, um, people will take that as glorifying. As glorifying yeah, glorifying. Not, no. Or just being matter of fact. Right. Or being observational. Yeah, I think it's just what you pick and choose to listen to and believe and what you, I guess, identify with that has a lot to do with it or whatever. But um, so I think people were really confused by that. And I'm just, you know, it's, I just, I think people are just a little closed minded. So I, yeah. and also to, barely start knowing about this person when they're dead and then now having an opinion on them. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know. Come on now. Yeah. yeah, like, share your opinion. yeah well, to be, of, to be part of the, the pile, the conversation. Yeah. yeah. To say something funny or get some reacts on I'm social on media. Team anti whatever. Yeah. It doesn't really, yeah. Like I drugs said, drugs and uh, little people. It, yeah. It doesn't really affect me so much. Like I said, I'm not going to sit here and say I was yeah. a fan, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, say it made me feel some type of way, even though it did since me and you went to his last performance. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing with us. Right. right? This is a podcast that's coming out of the Las Cruces in El Paso and his last show was in El Paso. Mm -hmm. So, Right. So it was, um, yeah. So it was, it was very, weird. it was very weird. Yeah. Very it was weird, yeah. really weird. Um, but yeah, it was just. Rest in peace, little Pete. Sad. Mm -hmm. Young, young dude. But yeah, guys, stop. Uh, obviously, if you're, if you're, you might be too far gone, you're not going to listen. You're not going to listen to me. But if you're being, if you want to, if you're on the fence and sometimes you catch yourself being a little nasty and uh, crazy and negative, you have nothing nice to say. Uh, don't say you it know, at all. Don't be dumb. Now, people are going to hear me say that. It's like, well, I says, I've seen some of your posts. Now, the thing with me, I'll, I'll tell you the difference. Uh, with me, I'm joking. I'm literally trying mm -hmm. to make people laugh. A lot of the shit is real. A lot of the shit's not true. It's just like dumb shit. Mm -hmm. I almost you know, shared a post, but I didn't because I got some negative <laughs> reaction about <laughs> me like uh, driving by a big puddle and splashing a homeless oh, guy. Oh, that's, that's yeah, it came like, out today on my on, on my uh, time hop. Uh, I put that last year, but in several people, like the more friends I get, like what the fuck, that's fucked up, dude. Let me just, that's not true. I would never do that. But my shit's jokes. Man. Some people are just like, they just are nasty. Like they're yeah. just dicks. Like fuck that, fuck that little faggot. That's what he gets for doing drugs, da da da. Yeah. So you know mean. what I mean? Like, I say some <laughs> shit that's like questionable. I'm trying to be funny. Like, I'm trying to be, yeah. I'm being silly. You know what I mean? Uh, I would never just, you'll never see me just post, uh, I'm not saying never if you want to go, but you're never going to see me just post like, oh, fuck, fuck ugly people. Or shit. I'm not going to just come out and say some just mean shit. Like, I'm going to make it funny <laughs> and it's not going to be like something specific about a person that mm -hmm. I know. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And if it is, it's probably like a homie that I'm busting their balls. But yeah, come on, guys. Stop being nasty. Stop. Like, what the fuck? Life's too short. Uh, do you need a hug? Let me know. Because that's what I see. When I see people getting angry, back to the anger shit. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? <laughs> Why are you so angry? I will hug you. And what do you have to gain? Because sometimes from... they try to like push my buttons and I'm like, 
Who hurt you? Like uh, I'm, yeah, not gonna, I'm not even. Pushed. You're not gonna. <laughs> I, you're not gonna push my buttons. Right, because so, I'm not mad. So if you're listening to this, <laughs> I'm sure some haters listen to this shit. Like you're not gonna mm. get me mad. Mm. I'm gonna laugh at you, uh, and I'm gonna offer you a hug. Mm. So that shit's not cool. Like that's I don't not. Like to hug. You're like, you're not evolving. You're devolving. Uh, if you're just spewing hate and nastiness. You can have opinions, Mm -hmm. but when you make it a point to get on, uh, you know, a platform and spew hate, uh, even if you have an opinion, question your own opinion. It's out there. That's going to be the theme of this shit, and that's going to be the the suggestion and the recommendation and the uh, question yo shit. As yeah, as the the uh, resolution for for you guys is question your own shit and be open minded. You know what I'm saying? And we'll Mm -hmm. we'll talk about a little bit more later. But Mm -hmm. so okay, so what do we have next? The highlights. Uh yeah, you, um the highlights yeah. So okay, we have the highlights. What else is on the list? Uh, because yeah, we're gonna. We wanted to talk a little bit about oh the people that did us wrong this year. People that did us wrong this year. Oof, that's maybe we I should have to end. pee again. So let me piss. Oh, so this might be a it's gonna be an hour and forty five minute episode. Nice. And we're back. We're... Took a little pee <laughs> again. You know, forty-one year old bladder. Oh so yeah, let's go into let's go to the highlights first. Uh, we're gonna just kind of go over the, all the awesome episodes we recorded this year. Mm-hmm. Shouts to all the guests and all that shit. <laughs> Again, we're already pretty deep into the episode. So I don't want to go too long, right? So we're gonna you know just kind of kind of breeze through the these. So, but yeah, we're gonna read the descriptions though, because uh, I am proud of my work. Oh my god! So what did we do? We did the recap last year, but mm-hmm. after that, it was emotional integration. With who? Luciana Garcia. Luciana Garcia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she, uh, so the, the podcast you? description? Yeah. Uh, life coach, hypnotherapist, holistic therapist, meditation instructor, Reiki practitioner. That's very long. Yep. So uh, Luci- <laughs> Luciana Garcia talks about her childhood, what inspired her to explore meditation, auditioning for La Voz, meeting her meditation master, and emotional integration. We get to hear about the services offered at her shop, the meditation studio, uh, including hypnotherapy and life coaching, among others. Uh, I share some of my weird phobias. We discuss Tony Robbins, uh, attending a 16-day meditation boot camp in Denmark. I am enlightenment versus ascension and the book, the power of now. Also, I was sober. Oh, you were. I was sober. Wow. I didn't drink for that one because I actually pretty much met her at the, I, this isn't somebody I knew beforehand. Mm-hmm. I just reached out to her because I thought it was interesting what she was doing. She's got her own business. She's traveled. I like her posts. Uh, that's the homie. You know, now we're buddies. Mm-hmm. Luciana, shouts to Luciana. Uh, yeah, support the shop. Again, my thing was to have, I want to hit you guys with some content, variety. It's not all going to be hip hop and this, this right. and that. Uh, but it was a dope episode and she, you know, she educated the people on uh, meditation, the benefits of it. And it was, it was a spiritual episode, but I didn't want to drink because I was like, let me, let me focus on this. That's nice. But, uh, it was dope. It was dope. It was, uh, again, go listen to that. The whole point of the going over the highlights is kind of promote the episodes of this year. Mm-hmm. And, and actually, if you're even, if it even catches your interest at all, go visit her shop, the meditation studio, mm-hmm. El Paso, Texas off of Montana. Uh, just you know, look for it on on the social medias, but check out the episode. What's the next one? Uh, well, we're gonna go down all the line. How I think many do we have? There's quite a few. I think many, I think we should go through I'll only let some. You pick them. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm gonna do that. There's way too many. Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch. I already have one queued up. So uh, this is episode 61. It is Doppelgate. Doppelgate. That's with uh, the homie Young Jung, Rico Ferry, as some may know him. Eric. George, whatever. What's the, instru- the description? Oh, uh, D and I sit down with recording artist Young Jung, a.k.a. Rico Ferry, to discuss his upbringing and how he met some of his current collaborators and friends, including Adrian Adonis and Eddie Boy. We talk about how he started skateboarding, the name Young Jung, his various projects, the current state of VA, and Doppelgate. Uh, also, we uh, answer listener questions and give 38 shout-outs to Lou.nice. Shout-out Shout to, to Lou the Dennis. homie <laughs> Lou.nice. <laughs> Got to make sure oh, um, he really thought that was funny. That was a really good episode, to be honest with you. Um, the re- so the reason why I chose it is because it actually has quite a few plays. It one of the, one yeah. of the most um, mm-hmm. all year. So um, it was really fun. I think um, for anyone that knows me knows that I love Eric. Eric is the homie. Um, it was really cool to do the podcast with him. Um, it's just pretty interesting. I don't know. I think um, what do we talk about? We talked a lot about music. We got and- to know him a little better. Yeah. Uh, he- 
he's multi-talented. Very. He's mm-hmm. very driven. He's very do-it-yourself. He's not going to wait around for everybody to mm-hmm. to help him with this because a lot of people have those excuses like we talked about earlier. Be about it. He's about it. He built up a following. That's why the, the episode There's has so, so many, many plays. Listens. Yeah. And uh, that's the homie, you know. What yeah. I'm saying? Like that's the, the shots to all VA. It was super. It was super fun. I remember yeah. it was. Well, good. that's the homie brain. That the shots the brain. Oh yeah. Who actually came through with some of the topics? He's a mm-hmm. you know, a brain. You know, mad love to you. We always talk. Mm. Uh, big supporter of the podcast. He was. Uh, that's how. That's how I met him face to face. He asked if he could come and sit in. But uh, you know, they're, they're both East Siders. They kind of, they got along too. Mm-hmm. So he supports uh, Eric shit. You know, Rico Young Jung. Keep yeah. doing your thing, young Jung. Yeah, so uh, definitely listen I think to he's that dropping, one. He dropped some new shit. Or he's about to. He's drop. about to. Yeah, he's going to in February. So be on the lookout. Definitely, um, you know, like I said, educate yourself a little bit maybe uh, before that young comes Jung. out. Um, really good. the uh, The next one I want to talk about though, um, this is one that I was not present for. I mean, I was here, I think, or I left. I don't know exactly, but it was episode seventy, um, and so, that is, um, that's what is it, dollop. So, yeah. yeah, that's the name of the episode. Yeah, it's oh, A Billy it? Free and oh, yeah. Late Night Loki. So that's the homies Ama and Logan. Um, that one has quite a few. Fun places episode. Too. What's the description? Uh, recording artist A Billy Free joins me to talk about her childhood in Chicago, her influences, the trans dimensional world of Aquila Flats, New Mexico, <laughs> her many talents, uh, bum fights, and pro salad wraps. Her cohort and beatsmith, Late Night Loki, uh, discusses his production style, his upcoming project with uh, Billy and State Park Bullies. Mm. Also, I nearly experienced a cardiac event. You're gonna have yeah. to. You're gonna have to elaborate on that. I had, yeah, my heart was hurting. Why? Uh, Why? <laughs> I remember, to be honest. <laughs> well, I think it was because yeah, mm. before they came out, I was having like, mm-hmm. I had stomach issues, allergies, oh, and I had like chest pains. Great episode. Getting again, older ain't no joke. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I met her again here, you know, it was, uh, mm. we got to learn about her background, mm-hmm. her awesome music. Again, multi talented. Mm-hmm. Logan as well. Yeah. Loki. It was fun, you know. Uh, Again, just coming with a variety of different people, different out of town, female, male, uh, different genres. So that's the whole point. Mm-hmm. It's just hitting with the content. But yeah, support anybody that knows her knows how she gets down. She's dope. So check out the episode and uh, check check her out. Check her music out. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that I'll talk about before, uh, just this one, because again, it has several plays. Um, the episode 78, Fuck Accolades. Like That's with uh, Fifth Estate Fifth State. and Shouts to the, Fifth the State. Brain. Uh, MC musician and not your typical military brat, the Fifth Estate, talks about his first rap group uh, attending West Point, his mixtape, Stuck in the 90s, watching Logic and Kendrick Lamar perform at South by Southwest before they blew up and performing at South by. We discuss the origin of his name and the a ti- a tribe called Quest Grammys snub. Also, we find out when Len, when Len Perez is uh, getting my shirt uh, I already paid for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the homie the fifth estate check him out guys again a dope mc uh-huh. very uh jazzy you know he's hang very, loose, very uh, creative yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and he's a very intelligent guy mm-hmm. uh again he's not from here but he lives here now mm-hmm. uh, check him out good music we had the brain on there this is one of the, the second episode that we had at uh, renee's crib that's the El, one of the el paso studio so to speak <laughs> since i live out here but yeah, his music, music's dope. Nice guy. And do yourself a favor and check his music out. But yeah. we talked about different things, his background. But yeah, the snub with the uh, Tribe Called Quest, like we mentioned earlier, you know, it's... Uh, fuck all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> let's do one more. Uh, the la- Well, let's do the last episode, no? What was that? Um, that was with Aaron. Do you want to talk about uh, Aaron Yankowski? Yeah, Aaron Yankowski. What's on the list? Uh, there's nothing on the list. No, I'm saying like, who, how many other? I know I did more episodes. Oh yeah, that. there's a uh, 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 Harvey Corridos. That's with Ocho. Um, Harvest Time. That's with Alphabet Eleven. Uh, Le Bouf, which is that's with. Oh, Defi. that's let's talk about that one. That one, okay. Yeah, read the description. Uh, let's see. Uh, my good friend and gifted MC Defi and his touring brethren Watts Real and Jay Scribe join me to talk about the third IY tour, how we met, his background, his experience with the Vans Warp tour, uh, healthy eating on the road, the art of rap concert, Prodigy's final performance, 
his encounter with Shia LaBeouf, uh, Rip and Mike's uh, on the Sway in the Morning radio show, his tour life video, tour stories, and his new album, Arrow with Mannix. Uh, the trio, along with St. Nobody and Brooks, sat, uh, set the mic ablaze with unforgettable acapellas. And I pat myself on the back for drunkenly spelling onomatopoeia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So dumb. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the homie Defy. I mean, I've known this kid since he was a teenager. Mm-hmm. When he was coming up, uh, introduced to me by Parrish. They came out to visit. Then I brought them out, him and Wake. And, uh, you know, their whole crew. And, yeah, I've known him for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's super busy. He stays active. He's productive. Uh, if you if you love hip-hop, Southwest his hip-hop, you've probably heard of him already. If not, look him up. He stays busy. He's mm-hmm. he's one of the hardest working guys out there. He's just constantly on the road, constantly traveling. Yeah. He's posting on Facebook. Like he's popping up all over the damn country. Mm-hmm. So I was lucky enough that he was passing through and was like, hey, we need to get you on the show. Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, but yeah, I've known him since he was a young buck. Yeah, that's the homie. I've known him for several years too, actually. Um, really good guy, uh, really hard worker. Um, so yeah, he's just involved in a lot of things, like mad respect for him, um, just for you know being active um, in things like the Vans Warped Tour thing. He was doing <clears throat> this whole the water. Uh, well, he's an activist yeah, in his uh-huh, own right. Yeah, yeah. He's... So he's he's a good guy. Yeah, that was that's the dope. Episode. Defy D E F hyphen I. Check him out. He's dope. Check him out. He's dope. And so, oh, people that did us wrong. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's. We'll go into that. Yep, mm-hmm. So we're going to kind of wrap, it, wrap up, it up, get close to the end. But one of the things that, yeah, again, like I said earlier, guys, you know, be careful who you spend time with, who you associate with. Uh, don't let people get under your skin. Also, look in the mirror and it's like, how am I contributing to this? Yeah. Nobody's putting a gun to your head mm-hmm. and making you hang out mm-hmm. with these people. Because, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm not going to even... Because you can look at it from different angles, but I had a couple of incidents uh, this year where people that I thought were my, one of them being a very close friend, kind of pulled some little shit. And, you know, I'm sure he has his side. But like I said earlier, before I've given chances, uh, you know, this person's been kind of doing a couple of shady things, but he's also done a lot of good, which makes me kind of like, you know, give him chances or whatever. But, you know, 2018, you know, half stepping. Like uh, Big Daddy Kane said, I'm not, I'm not giving chances. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, just, I'm just cutting people off. If you're not conducive of my shit, what I'm trying to accomplish, mm-hmm. or just harmony in general, just yeah. be peaceful. I don't want to like, I, I don't want to get too in detail or whatever, yeah, yeah, too, yeah. because everyone who yeah, needs to know knows. Yeah. But um, yeah, 2017 was a pretty interesting year for me, and some, I some snakes were coming out. Right, uh, just some things, just crazy. Uh, anyway, I have to say that I probably unfollowed, blocked, or cut out of my life otherwise the most people i have in a really long time this year is and i'm not saying that to be boastful about it because i mean that says something about me too i don't block people i don't do stuff like that like in in normally at all ever but this year just some really nasty bad stuff happened and it just it changed me a little bit yeah (laughs) so i just now because now you're more guarded or no i mean i cut people off Mm -hmm. like um it's just uh you just have to watch what it's doing to you and stuff like that you know and if you need it then you need it so you just it was just intense uh for me this year but i I did learn that uh even someone who you (laughs) were super close with who you think would never do you so terribly dirty we'll do you dirty so, so there is there. yeah there is a the right motivation yeah there is no ends to what people will really do to you so just be careful <laughs> well, one thing i'll say is that sometimes you know like you can't be totally surprised right. uh there's red flags mm-hmm. so i will i'll say this don't what ignore choose, the red flags yeah what we choose, choose to, to see what them. we choose to accept all that kind of stuff uh, it goes back to time time is precious mm-hmm. it's very limited mm-hmm. our time on this planet is finite and some people are, don't care about it, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Other people want to be productive. And it's going to work against you if you continue to associate with, don't ignore the red flags, with people that mm-hmm. aren't really looking out for you. They'll have their moments where like, you know, they'll check in with you and Stop act like they care. It. Yeah. So look in the mirror too. Mm-hmm. Stop, you know, instead of complaining to another friend about this friend, mm-hmm. uh, understand that, hey, you're you're being a, you're a part of it too. Yeah. So... Check yourself, nip it in the bud, Again, yep. because you don't want to let it get to the point where some something more serious happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, we ain't got time for that. So if we're on the same page and you're listening to me, 
let's 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 be on that tip of mm-hmm. hey whether even if you're a it might not even be somebody that's hurting you it could be somebody's just kind of like just just kind of uh plateaued and just mm-hmm. somewhere in the middle and that in itself may not be promoting so there's nothing wrong with you don't have to sit down and have a conversation with them but you're you're here you have different goals different paths there's nothing wrong with don't feel guilty don't feel bad no, you don't really owe people but if they are negative even more so like go on your path because yeah. you know you you only have yourself to blame if you continue to let that hold you back and associate with these negative people because like in my situation you know a couple of these people they, they had shown signs of it and i ignored it and you know i'll, I'll be honest in that relationship, I was probably getting something out of it too. You know, I was, mm-hmm. you got to look at the whole picture. Mm-hmm. You know, let's be honest. We're humans. You look at the whole thing. Is there more good than bad? So on and so forth. You know, you take it on a case by case basis. But at the same time, don't give too many chances because it's, you got to, you got to move on, move forward. You can always get new friends. You got to check your level of patience with people. Um, it's not just enough to friends underst- come and go. Uh, yeah, it's not just enough to understand why they do the things that they do. And, you know, it's it also, like I said, does go back on you. So yeah, it's just uh, it's this. Yeah, this year was pretty rough. I'm not gonna lie for me personally. Um, really stressful at work and things like that. Um, work people actually didn't do me any kind of wrong, and that's really nice. But my personal life, because it's kind of rough in the corporate uh, world. Oh yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But um, no one, no one really did me dirty there. <laughs> just. Uh, you know, just people, pe- people that actually care about me, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> just those ones. <laughs> so, yeah, just to kind of like sum it up, uh, like we said earlier, don't be too quick to anger. Don't let people get under your skin, but also check who you associate with. Again, this isn't news. This isn't groundbreaking. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's this, there's multiple sayings of, you know, uh, show me who you hang out with and I'll show you you. It's in Spanish. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a mul- there's multiple ones. Yep. So just kind of do a, an inventory of who you hang out with, because mm-hmm. that's kind of what makes you up. A, a com- an average. Take your five. The five people you hang out most with. I forgot who said it. Uh, you're an average of those five. Hey. A few average. If you were to mm-hmm. score them somehow mm-hmm. from one to a hundred each mm-hmm. person, you're an average of those five. So check who you hang out with. Mm. Try to hang out with people that uplift you and shit. I'm not good at math, but those seem like some pretty dense odds. Well, yeah. So, so let's let's leave the people that did us wrong behind in 2017, leave them behind. as well as a few other things that we want left behind. Like what? For me, I'm I'm kind of over the D should marry Jesus jokes. D should marry Jesus. Uh, uh yeah, it's, it's it gets old, but it's also funny, you know. I guess. People think something's going on here. Just because there's one bedroom in this apartment. There's not one bedroom. (laughs) Nothing's going on between me and Dean. Uh, But it's funny, you know. It's it's. But come up with some new shit. Come up with some new jokes. I'm like, I'm not. I don't think it's new jokes. What are some? What are some played out fucking jokes that people just need to stop? Like Um, I said earlier, the Trump. He's orange. This, this, and that. His neck. If you're gonna do man crush Monday jokes, make them a little more creative. (laughs) You can't make it something that's just easily that's bad. Like, oh, your your MCM yeah. uh, is a serial killer. Like, yeah, well, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's recognized as bad. Uh, just you know, for mm. for you social media types, my point is yeah. ultimately a little more creativity with the posts. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just taking up space on the leave fucking, that basic ass shit behind. Honestly, yeah. So yeah, that's there's just some things you gotta move forward with. Um, making fun of people for how they look. We talked making a little bit about Making fun of people. Yeah. Guys, that's another basic. So It's lame. mean too. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Like just like making fun of people's physical of, uh, mm-hmm. appearance. Uh, I talk shit all day, but that's like the lowest yeah. fucking hanging fruit ever. It's especially if there's no actual uh, cleverness put it's into it. It's a cheap it. shot. It's too basic. It's it's basic and it's douchey. It's, it's right. the it's douchiest mean. thing in the world. It is mean. Like, if you want to be a douche, I guess, go for it. <laughs> but at least have some creativity behind it, oh, which is good. rare. It's fucking rare. Uh, Leave that shit behind, guys. There's, you, you, you know guys as, as people, as individuals, there's certain shit you got you to gotta rest in peace. You got to leave it behind. <laughs> or else we're not going to grow. No. Those fake friends is one of them. <laughs> 
Uh, oh. Cool. Shit. That's about it, right? We, we yeah. Got, we're, so, we're pretty deep. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty drunk. Oh, God. Uh, high points of this year for us personally? High points. Okay. High points. I mean, just in general, for anybody that cares, listeners that keep up with the shit, <laughs> keep up with Jesus' life, mm. sweet Jesus. Uh, you know, I moved to Las Cruces uh, in January, officially, of this year. I have, it's a long story, not going to, you know, bore you with the details. 2017. But starting, uh, you know, something happened to me a couple years ago that kind of set me back big time. And I've been kind of crawling out of a hole slowly but surely uh, since then. And 2015 was tough, second part of it especially. 2016 was a little better. 2017 was a little better. Only thing that sucks is I'm kind of far away from my friends and family. So it's kind of always a hassle to Mm -hmm. make plans and things like that. You know, it's a 45 minute drive, depending where you live, it could be an hour. Uh, but being that we have, you know, my awesome uh, bestie here mm-hmm. that allowed me to move in here and was willing to, you know, I was uh, able to find employment. Point being, you know, things are looking up. A lot of people are complaining about the year. I think a lot of it's jokes too. But yeah. for me, it's another step forward. I've, uh, you know, from 2015 when. Uh, had some little le- legal issues, so it's been a little rough. But yeah, another step forward. Mm-hmm. We keep plowing forward. We keep. We don't give up. We're fighters. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mm-hmm. I'm a fighter. I'm a resourceful. Uh, I got a good support system. My friends. Shouts to all my friends, uh, and my family too. So yeah, it's uh, again another step forward. Mm-hmm. And yeah, never give up, guys. Just keep plowing forward. And stop with those depressing ass fucking social media posts. That shit's fucking annoying as fuck. I really am. Leave joking. that in 2017. I am joking too. People should understand that I'm joking most of the time. Also. Oh yeah, dress uh, uh, yourself. The what was it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. What was the the, the few F B questions we got? Yeah, Facebook? that was uh, my obsession. Why is D my, obsessed with, with self loathing? So it's kind of just um, so I I say it. As a joke, really, because like, I mean, I can't hide the fact that certain things are happening or certain things have happened that make me feel a certain way. Um, but I can laugh about them a little bit to be like, I'm stupid. That's some, a little bit. <laughs> that's some next level jokes, though, because um, it's like you don't even know if you're joking. Enough, that's yeah, like because it's it is rooted in some truth, yeah. perhaps. But I, I am really I'm not putting it out there because I want people's sympathy. I do hopefully that they laugh at how sad that is. <laughs> So that's maybe I it. do. I, I laugh at you. All, <laughs> yeah, all you day. do. For one, for two, <laughs> difference being is that again, it's very well written. It's creative shit, <laughs> as opposed to somebody yeah. just sharing a depressing yeah. ass story or thought. Mm-hmm. Not hating. Mm-hmm. It's just come on, guys. Let's just pull your bootstraps up. Yeah, brush yourself off. Mm-hmm. That, 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 there's nothing good that comes from that at all. Like to be clear, I don't loathe myself. I mean, there's a certain level. I think I maybe. would say call somebody, guys. <laughs> uh, if you're really depressed, uh, right. call somebody, your best friend, your family. Yeah. The social media shit. If you don't oh, want to yeah. show too much weakness in public like that, because mm-hmm. people will prey on that shit too. Sad. But, but yeah, um, yeah, that's about it, right? Mm, yeah, I guess mm, so. Some thank yous, some yeah. shout outs. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who to thank. I'll let you go first. Uh, I don't really have any shots. You don't. Know, you're not thankful for anybody. Oh, uh, I can't. You put me on the spot. Um, I'm really thankful. I I've mentioned it a couple times this year, but I, we have talked about moving in together like for so long uh-huh. since we became friends or whatever, and it finally happened. And um, I didn't have any like thoughts about how it would go, but it's been really nice to have you here. I have to say, with with in conjunction to the 2017 craziness, yeah. uh, it's been nice to like have you here for me you know what i'm saying yeah. so that was um so with so you shout moving, out to me yeah shout out to you i'm thankful for you you are you know a good friend for sure a, an okay roommate let's be honest but yeah. Yeah, um yeah, yeah. a little subpar but you're <laughs> you're definitely a great friend so <laughs> shout out to you for sure um i don't know i think uh shout out to fudge my dog i gotta be thankful shout for him he's always there for you hey, not even that but you know he did go through his surgery this year to get he his teeth removed surgery. yeah so he went, he went through some major he's, surgery yeah, my little my little bug my little yeah, love bug but um just grateful for all the the things that i went through even though it is some terrible stuff uh thankful for that uh it's caused me to question myself, I think, There's and look at myself. Yeah. So, you know, we are ever evolving, aren't we? So I'm just thankful for that. I'll give thank yous and shout outs to the listeners, especially the loyal listeners that listen to all five all of the you episodes, all five of you. Love you. Even if you just listen to one, thank you for those that buy the merch and wear the merch. Appreciate it. On top of that, just uh, 
like close friends, the top tier. I'm not going to go down the list of names because <laughs> best friend isn't a person. It's it a, is tier. a tier. FYI. You know? uh, I'm not going to go down the list of names. It's a short list. You know who you are. And just anybody who's had my back for real, for real. All the guests that took the time to meet That's up really with nice. me. Someone that drove all the way over here. Driving all the way, just mm-hmm. meeting up. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's a two-way street. You right. know, we're both getting something out of it. Uh, but I still appreciate it. Of course. And all the lessons from negative things that have happened. Uh, shouts to the universe or whoever the fuck's running shit. Oh, man. For the, the clothes I get to wear, the food I get to eat, <laughs> and the apartment I get to live uh, in. Yeah. This is a pretty stable year, all, all things considered for me. Yeah, it was so, pretty chill. Yeah. It was pretty chill. Yeah. All, all things Can't considered, complain. yeah. Stop complaining, guys. Exactly. All righty, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. Find us on uh, SoundCloud, Stitcher, mm. iTunes, all the popular podcast all apps. That. All that. This is Sweet Jesus Radio. Thank you for playing. Bye. Boom. Sweet Jesus Radio.